My name is Kat Riggins and I am a blues singer from the United States, um, born and raised in Miami. And I do um, a lot of blues, blues rock, blues funk, blues soul, blues uh, gospel, any, uh, anything blended with blues and then the blues alone, as long as there's blues involved. There was a dangerous woman from Miami way I love all music, but I think it's it's been blues, and I get this question a lot. It's because blues chose me, I think. I love music, I grew up with music in my household, all types of music, country music, R&B, gospel especially, but the blues is what called to me, and it called to my voice because I have the raspy voice, a deeper, heavier voice, and it's not really pure and clean. So my voice relates to the blues the best, and and it was the singers, the blues singers that my mom used to play, like the Coco Taylors and the Etta James and the Janis Joplins that I related to most. So that's, I think that's why my heart fell in love with it. Since I had to choose, I only had two choices, choose or lose. Tina Turner's voice is one that has always called out to me, always. And she used to do, you know, before before Tina with the big hair and and uh, and the um, and the rock and roll Tina, she was doing a lot of blues with Ike and Tina. Yeah, exactly. So she was singing blues songs like I, um, "I Know You Love Me, Baby" and stuff like that. And those are the ones that really caught my they caught my heart. And then also, my mom used to listen to a lot of Denise LaSalle, and I liked her attitude. She's always very uh, <laughs> um, bold for a woman. She would say whatever it is she wanted to say without filters and say it on stage. And that kind of power in a woman has always been inspiring to me. I think people try to stay safe in, in music, especially blues music being um, a genre that is not mainstream. So when you want to be successful at something, you want to try to please everybody. So some people are afraid to address social issues, things that are going on in the world right now, especially on stage, because you don't want to lose fans and you don't want to offend your audience or offend anyone, you know, because we work very hard especially this being something that if, if you're doing it full time and this is how you eat, you work very hard to keep food on the table. So the last thing you want to do is offend those people who are coming to see your show because then it's difficult, more difficult to get shows. But the way I, I address it, I address those social issues during my show and with the songs that I write is I just try to do it honestly. And I, I try to do it in a way that is not like shoving my beliefs or my opinions down anyone's throat. I'm just expressing my own feelings and, and what I'm thinking because that's what music is about anyway. It's about self-expression. It's about trying to inspire, inspire the world to be better. So when I, when I address those issues, I try to come from a place of, of wanting to help people grow rather than trying to put people down and stuff like that. And I always say before I sing a song that I know is going to be controversial like that, I always say, if you are easily offended, this just ain't the show for you. So that way I give everybody a little disclaimer to let them know this might be something that's political or maybe religious, because I sing about God a lot um, in, in, in my shows. So I just... I just, I'm honest when I approach those issues and I think that my audiences appreciate that, that honesty because then they can relate to it or they can take it or leave it. But it's something that I have to get out at that moment and if I don't express it, I feel confined.
I, I feel like when I'm on stage, whatever wants to come out at that moment comes out. It depends on the song, it depends on the moment, it depends on the audience also. So you might see somebody sweet for a second. I hardly do a lot of sweet though. I don't do, <laughs> I don't do a lot of sweet, but I do a lot of bold. I do sexy sometimes depending on the song. Um, I do pissed off sometimes depending on the song. It's just, it's, it all depends on that, that particular song and that particular moment, how the audience is reacting at that time. Um, for instance, I have a song called Hear Me on, on my new CD, and um, it's a song about being hurt and then about the anger that comes from that hurt and about the strength that comes from also the anger that comes from that hurt. So in that one song, I, I, try to, I try to relate all of those feelings because I do want the audience to understand what I'm feeling when I'm singing any song. So I try to, I try to bring it out on stage and I try to just pass that out in the audience so people can understand me internally. Frog in my shoe. Crawfish on my shoulder, he looking dead at you. Got dust from a rattlesnake, got a black spider bone. If that don't do it, baby, I'm the girl in the boys' club, and and there's a lot of us now that, cause you know this blues thing is is kind of a man's world. You know, we there's a few, a handful of women that are acknowledged and um, respected um, in this blues world. And, but you always see a bunch of men on the on the the roster when it comes to blues festivals or or whatever. Like you see a bunch of men, maybe one woman, you know. So this album is is just that. It's a girl in the boys club. Like now we're busting down the door. We're gonna be on your stage. Um, don't be offended. We're not trying to take over. We're just trying to get our piece of the pie, you know. So this album is dedicated to all the blues women who knocked down the door to the boys club before before me, the Coco Taylors, the Etta Jameses, the Big Mama Thorntons, the Ma Rainey's, the Bessie Smiths, all of them, you know, to Bonnie Ray and, and like everybody. And also dedicated to the women um, that are walking through this door with me right now, that, that are paving the way for women that are gonna be coming through that blues club later, like the Shamikia Copelands and the Beth Hart's. <laughs> and um, you know, like Nikki Hill, I love her. She's like, she's blues rock, and she's got this crazy energy, you know. And um, uh, Anika Chambers, oh my gosh, there's so many that I can't even name them all. But not everybody knows about them, and everybody should know these names. Everybody should know these names. So that's what in the boys' club is about. It's about the girls in the boys' club. I have a prayer. I pray every time. I mean, I pray every morning. I pray every night. But before I get on stage, I have a prayer. And, and a part of the prayer is that God allows me to be a vessel for love, for joy, for peace, for strength, uh, for hope, for courage, for passion, and for compassion. So that's the energy that, I, that I, I feel like I want conveyed whenever I'm on stage or whenever somebody hears me on the radio or anything that I'm involved in, in where I can give a message to people. That's what I want. That's what I want people to get from, from what I do. I want them to see and hear and feel God in me. And when I say that, I mean I want them to see and hear and feel love in me. That's the whole point of, of any art, is to spread love, to spread real emotion and feeling. So that's it, that's the answer to that question. <laughs>
My name is Kat Riggins and I am touring Holland and Europe on my In The Boys Club tour and I'm so grateful to be sitting here right now talking with thebluesradio.com. Everybody should tune in anytime you get the chance.